At a growing number of laboratories, scientists are experimenting with dangerous viruses and bacteria to discover new ways to treat and prevent diseases. Yet despite multi-million dollar facilities, high-tech equipment, and stringent safety guidelines, a USA Today network investigation has found accidents and near-miss incidents occur frequently. The spacesuit-like gear scientists must wear to work with Ebola and other deadly pathogens have sprung holes dozens of times. Mice infected with deadly viruses have escaped. Vials of bioterror pathogens have gone missing. Scientists have been bitten and scratched by animals, stuck with needles or cut on equipment used in experiments. In the wake of lab mistakes at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta that potentially exposed workers to anthrax, Ebola, and a deadly strain of bird flu, our investigation has found hundreds of accidents have happened at other laboratories with little public scrutiny. And even when research facilities commit the most egregious safety breaches, federal regulators keep their names secret. What the CDC incidents showed us this summer in particular is that the very best labs are not perfectly safe. They're very safe, but they're not perfectly safe. If it can happen there, it certainly can happen anywhere. Certainly what makes me most worried is that, uh, that somebody from a laboratory accident perspective, that somebody would come home, ignore their symptoms, um, spread it to their family, and, um, and then it would spread further. Yet even the federal government doesn't know the whereabouts of all of the high containment labs experimenting with the most dangerous types of bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens, the GAO has warned for years. The USA Today Network's investigation identified more than 200 of these kinds of labs that operate at biosafety levels three and four, the two highest containment levels. They're run by federal and state agencies, major pharmaceutical companies, universities, and medical centers. While some are surrounded by fences and guards, others are located in nondescript office parks or near popular shopping and restaurant districts. Lab safety experts say the best labs put safety first. They emphasize that serious infections among lab workers are rare, and incidents where labs have been the source of outbreaks are rarer still. Unfortunately, laboratory accidents uh, occur pretty regularly in the world, but most of the time, the, the people that are most at risk, of, of course, are the people working in the laboratory. And almost all accidents occur with things that are, with pathogens that aren't transmissible. So most times a laboratory accident may occur and it's not a big deal for anyone except potentially the researcher, which is not a big public health concern. But some outbreaks have been leaked to labs. There were some laboratory accidents with SARS, which had an outbreak in 2003. The laboratory worker brought it home and infected um, members of their family. Perhaps the most recent and maybe directly relevant one is an animal virus, which is the foot and mouth disease virus. Uh, that escaped from a laboratory in Great Britain in 2007 and caused months of, of economic damage as it spread from one uh, farm to another infecting livestock. A lab accident also is believed to be the source of a flu strain that reemerged in 1977 with nearly the same genetic makeup as a strain that disappeared 20 years earlier. What's striking about that example is, uh, whatever its origin, it was one of the two major flu viruses that circulated for uh, 32 years uh, up till uh, 2009. So this was a virus that really made a lot of people sick. In Louisiana, tests are currently underway to make sure a deadly bioterror bacterium hasn't colonized the soil and water around the Tulane National Primate Research Center north of New Orleans. Federal officials say sloppy biosafety practices allowed the bacteria to get out of a secure laboratory there last year. It infected monkeys that had been living in Tulane's outdoor breeding colony. Officials believe the bacteria only spread inside buildings at the research facility. So far, no tests outdoors have detected the bacterium, which is called Burkholderia pseudomaliae. It can cause serious illness in people and animals if they come into contact with contaminated soil and water. Area residents expressed concerns to regulators and Tulane officials at a community meeting this spring. Young from USA Today is here tonight, but thank you to them for keeping this in the headlines. I don't feel we would have gotten near the information we did had they not continued the story, so thank you to them. The lab in the Tulane accident, like hundreds of others across the country, is what's called a biosafety level three lab. Laboratory designs are based on a stepwise approach to uh, containment. 
So generally, the lowest biosafety level is a BSL-1, where you work with pathogens that can be worked on on the benchtop. BSL-2s will allow you to work with some bloodborne pathogens, some human pathogens that are not especially dangerous. A BSL-3 is a much higher containment design. These labs are used to study microbes that can be lethal if inhaled, things like anthrax and dangerous strains of avian influenza. Negative air pressure is used to keep pathogens inside, and scientists work with specimens inside special biosafety cabinets where any spills or splashes can be contained. It is very important to know lots about how robust the procedures and the safety programs are, but what people are really interested in is how well it's working. Details of lab accidents are difficult to come by and often shrouded in secrecy. I think the, the data are very limited because the reporting is uh, not mandatory for all labs. Officials with the Federal Select Agent Program, which regulates labs that work with potential bioterror pathogens, refused repeated requests for interviews. The CDC issued a statement saying it believes the current system of oversight is adequate. USA Today's investigation has found that more than 100 labs experimenting with potential bioterror agents have faced enforcement actions for serious safety violations since 2003. Some are repeat offenders. Five labs have faced sanctions multiple times. Two labs were kicked out of the select agent program and five labs suspended. Who are these labs? Regulators won't release their names. They say a 2002 bioterrorism law requires this information be kept secret. It's crucial for, for journalists and, and safety advocates and others to keep digging and trying to find out what's going on. The irony is that the more people in the community feel that there's secrecy, the more they're distrustful, whether it's even warranted, their distrust is warranted or not. And I think in general what people need to understand is the work that goes on in infectious disease high containment laboratories protects them profoundly, not, and not just the United States, but worldwide. To learn more about the research occurring at more than 200 high containment labs across the country, and to look through more than 20,000 pages of safety records obtained by our reporters, go to biolabs.usatoday.com.